Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Leo, and I'm here today to answer some questions from our community. One of the questions that came up is, what should we do if we come down with COVID-19? This is on everybody's mind uh, and really is obviously affecting every single facet of society, not only in the United States, but globally, of course, and is pretty scary. But the good news is that eczema by itself does not seem to be, from what we know around the world and from what we understand about the scientific underpinnings of the disease, it does not seem to be a particular risk factor. It does not seem to put people at special risk. Now, asthma may. Having asthma may put the lungs in a situation where they are more sensitive to being infected or potentially having a worse case of infection with this virus. So that's a little bit of a different population, but for our patients who only have eczema, they're probably at no higher risk than everybody else. Now still, we all have some risk, uh, so we wanna be careful and do all that we can do. If we do become infected with it, we wanna of course alert our doctors and go through the protocol to make sure that we get the treatment that we need. The biggest issue for our eczema patients who are more severe is that many of them are on powerful medicines. And this is tricky because a lot of the medications can affect the immune system, which in theory could affect the body's ability to fight the virus. And that puts us in a very difficult position. So the way I view it, and this of course is rapidly changing, there's a lot of discussion around this, but there are sort of three different tiers of medicines that we're thinking about. The first are the most powerful immune suppressant medicines, and these would include things like prednisone or prednisolone, uh, cyclosporin, probably methotrexate, although maybe to a slightly lesser degree. Those guys are pretty powerful immunosuppressant medicines, and very likely they could affect the body's ability to fight off this virus. So for patients on those, we really want them being super, super, super careful. If they can come off of them, that's great. If they can't come off, we wanna to try to get them on the lowest possible dose so that they're still comfortable, uh, but minimal immune suppression. And for those patients, if they were to get an infection with the COVID or even something suspicious for it, we would want to stop it until things are better. The good news is that all of those are in and out of your system relatively quickly. You know, particularly with prednisone and cyclosporin, within a few days, the immune system starts to come back up. And we know this because if our patients stop them, their eczema flares up. And of course, we know the eczema is a sign, one of the signs of the immune system acting back up. So that's the first tier. There's kind of a middle tier of medicines that very few of our eczema patients are on, but these are the ones more psoriasis patients might be taking. And these are the biologics that are more broad spectrum. For example, the TNF inhibitors or tumor necrosis factor inhibitors. Uh, these medications have probably a modest risk of lowering the immune system and therefore increasing the potential of the virus. I don't know that much about those because they don't really apply directly to our patients in the same way. And then there's sort of the safest tier of powerful medicines, and this would include dupilumab, the trade name Dupixent. This one I like to think of as really not being immunosuppressant at all because it's really taking an abnormally high level of IL-4 and IL-13 inflammatory messengers and really just bringing them back down to normal. So we think that Dupixent probably has a very low risk, if any risk, of increasing infection or having some more severe disease in the event of COVID uh, infection. So that's good, although of course we don't know. So we have to take these things with a grain of salt. It's never really been tested, but given what we know and what we've seen around the world, uh, it seems to be among the safest choices. Again, all of those same initial point supply. If we don't need to be on a medicine, we don't want to be on it. If we do get sick, we probably want to hold off on uh, taking more until we know more about what's going on. But that's the good news. Uh, for our eczema patients, we just want to make sure everyone's staying safe, doing all the right things in terms of social distancing, washing their hands. Uh, and in another video, we talk about the best ways to wash our hands safely and moisturize so that they don't damage the skin there. I hope that's helpful and I look forward to seeing everyone at the next one. Take care and stay well.